We start off with Kenneth C. Thayer, originally from Utica, who is one of Oneida County's highest decorated veterans. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, two Bronze Stars, three Purple Hearts, and the Presidential Unit Citation. I spoke with Kenneth about his time serving in World War II and the importance of teaching younger generations the stories of our veterans. Kenneth was drafted at 18 years old and he served in the 30th Infantry Division. He explains that at that time, people had a strong pride for their country. Everybody wanted to enlist and if, and if, uh, uh, if somebody went in and uh, his friend didn't go in yet, uh, you just felt terrible because your friend had gone on ahead of you into the service and you were sitting in and here you were sitting at home in the nice comfort, you know, with your family. Kenneth met Alan Foote, whose father served in the same infantry. When discussing stories of World War II, they decided to put the stories together into two books titled The Young Liberators. I, I say in one of the books that uh, uh, I, I believe that there was some kind of uh, intervention uh, uh, from somewhere that uh, compels us to do these things, and uh, so I wanted to I wanted to make uh, 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 some kind of a record in commemoration of the men that I served with. When asked what it was like to go through this at such a young age, Kenneth says it was not as terrifying as you might think. You, when when you look at uh, your fellow GIs. You always thought he might get killed, but I won't. You know, it's always going to be the other guy. And he was thinking the same thing. Kenneth fought in the Battle of the Bulge and was the only survivor of his unit from that engagement. A Belgian woman and her nine-year-old found him and dragged him through German lines to safety. I owe a great deal to, those, to, the, to that lady and her little girl, and I went back there to that same town in Belgium, my wife and I did. And we were looking for them, but it turned out that they were refugees from further into the, near the German lines. And they were retreating and they took up temporary residence in this village of Stomont, Belgium. However, he was able to reunite with two German girls he knew during the war. Threw their arms around me and started crying, they said, Der kleiner Soldat means the little soldier in, in German. My wife kept saying, I don't understand this at all. She said, uh, you were the enemy here, and yet they treat you like their long lost nephew. These ladies had said, well, your husband freed us also. Kenneth explains to us that the stories of veterans need to be kept alive and taught in our schools. And I don't think an awful lot of it is being taught in class. Only, only some of the important dates, you know, history becomes a series of important dates and you don't attach anybody or any people to those dates. They're just dates. And World War II ended 76 years ago. The numbers of World War II veterans still with us get smaller each year. This is why it becomes so important to memorialize the efforts and experiences of those who fought in Europe and in the Pacific. Here is the story of a museum in Louisiana that seeks to do just that. For Tom Chikansky, the museum is personal. His dad, Alphonse, served in the Second World War, and now his uniform hangs on display. He had a Thompson submachine gun, and he used to fire it from the hip. He says they didn't realize until years later the significance of what his father had been through in Normandy and Pearl Harbor. He was sitting in the mess hall. He'd gotten up early. He was a corporal, and there was a table for non-commissioned officers, and they were drinking their coffee when Japanese planes flew over and strafed the barracks. And I remember him saying there were several men in his company who were killed while they were still asleep. Tom's aunts and uncles also served in the war, which inspired him to enlist in the reserves and was on active duty in the 80s. The museum highlights an American experience during World War II from the battle soldiers fought to how families handled changes back home. I think the largest story that runs throughout is that 
the people in World War II were average individuals like you and I are today. And we tell the story not as much of the generals and the grand strategies, but of the individual. Tom says the goal of the museum is to show the facts of history and allow younger folks to reflect on the tragedy of war and how the country rallied together in challenging times. It's critical for Americans to remember that at one point in our history, we did all come together, we set politics aside, and we all came together for the greater good of the country and the world. As the state recovers from the pandemic, more school tours are coming through the doors. The museum also provides online resources for teachers to better help them teach about the war. This war is a new kind of war. What started as a small collection to recognize New Orleans native Andrew Jackson Higgins for his efforts in the war creating the Higgins Boats is now a federally recognized institution. When we first opened, we used to see a lot more veterans. And the veterans would often come with their families and their children and grandchildren and tour the museum and, and they would learn about what their grandparents did during the war. And as time has gone on, there are less and less veterans who are able to travel. The museum has been growing for decades. Now a new exhibit based around the Holocaust and liberation of concentration camps is under construction. Every day for 20 years, Tom has walked through the doors of the museum and passed by his father's uniform. To him, keeping the mission of the museum alive is an honor to celebrate those he has met along the way. The hardest part of this job is that those people are all passing away, and, and but it's an honor for me to be able to work here and to make sure their story is told. And coming up next, we'll meet a local veteran of recent service and a look at how our veterans are being remembered here in the Mohawk Valley. Stay with us.